Good morning. We are back at our hostel with the best view ever. After we said goodbye to you last night, we went and got some sushi at a conveyor belt sushi restaurant. It was recommended to us by our hostel host and he told us it's great sushi and very cheap which he was very correct. Altogether, it only cost us, I think, like less than 20 bucks, and we got full on sushi. It was amazing, to the point where we came back and we didn't eat snacks. You can either order your sushi on an iPad, and they will make it, and they will actually send it out on the conveyor belt for you, and it has like a red tray underneath it, and then the plate and the sushi, or there's other ones that just have the plate and the sushi, and you can just take them right off their conveyor belt. You don't have to order them. It's all fresh, it was delicious. Other huge highlight was the green tea. Most of our experiences at restaurants here, we have to wait for the waitress to refill your green tea, but at this restaurant you make it yourself, it's all you can drink, and it was delicious. So Yev and I are laying on the hammocks, enjoying every little ounce of this view, soaking it in, because tonight we will not have this view anymore, and we will not have all this leg room, because we're going on a, an overnight bus. So we just took a two hour bus ride, and I fell asleep, um, from up near Mount Fuji back to Shinjuku where we were for the last few days when we were in Tokyo. We got some snacks, we got some chips. We're gonna make some ham and cheese sandwiches on this bus, uh, but we're hoping to get some sleep because we're gonna get to Osaka at seven in the morning and have a whole day. the bus putting the hair up so it's pretty in the morning we found our seats 8c and 8d they come with blankets on your seat and there's also some other blankets up top but they don't look very clean so i don't really know if we're gonna be using them i left my scarf underneath because i put my luggage down there they give you a little luggage tag so hopefully it stays safe but oh what else we have a curtain just in case you're an ugly sleeper like me and you don't want to bug your neighbor and have them have to see your mouth open all the bus ride. But there's, oh, and there's no bathroom on this bus, so we're gonna be holding it. But nine hours, here we come. Ready for hand Sammy's? I'm a little disappointed because on the bus we just took from Mount Fuji to Tokyo, we each had an outlet at our seat. This one, that's nine hours long, does not seem to have any. But you have some skulls on your headrest. Yes. Happy skulls. Approximately 10 hours later. We're in a new city, and we have no idea what we're gonna do. So for having absolutely no plan today of what we were going to do, it's actually working out really well. We got the opportunity to meet some new friends today. They are friends of one of our dear friends, and they are living here in Japan for a few months, and took the day off to come into the city to show us around, and show us some of their like favorite places and foods. And so today we have private tour guides and they're amazing. So after they picked us up, the first stop of the day was to go get some coffee. Uh, Dan actually found this super cute coffee shop that specializes in Colombian only coffee beans. The owner of it is a young guy our age, maybe like late 20s, who uh, just started the shop about six to seven months ago. He gets all the beans from the farm that his good friend's family owns in Colombia. We got to try a few of the different varieties of Colombian specialty coffee, but it was amazing. It's really good coffee. The shop is absolutely beautiful. They have like these plants and the lighting and I, you, you gotta go see it. Um, we will be honest with you, 
it might be some of the most expensive coffee that we've ever had. Uh, it was delicious, but it, it definitely has a pretty price tag on it. He gave us chocolate as presents and it's from New Zealand. It was delicious. He doesn't speak much English, but his hospitality totally makes up for it. It's definitely worth it. Back to getting coffee, we just kind of wandered around Osaka a little bit. We saw a cute koi pond. <laughs> And then we wandered through a market and we got mochi, which we had had one mochi before um, from a little bakery, but this mochi was different. It's the same one that's on the emoji. It's like the three different colors. What was it? This one was Sakura, the other one's plain, and the third one is like a... Um... Matcha. Green, pink, and white. It was delicious and fun. They come on a little stick. And now I know what that emoji is. <laughs> so after mochi, we actually had to run an errand with them, which might be one of my favorite things we did. We had to go pick up some cookies. So in America, we're used to Valentine's Day, where, you know, men, women give things to people you love. Now in Japan, it is traditional on Valentine's Day for women to give the gift to a man. But to make up for that, exactly a month later, on March 14th, there is a special day where the men that received the gift on Valentine's Day now have to reciprocate and give a gift to those women or to <laughs> that woman. It's kind of funny. It's like, it's, it's, it's kind of like they're paying a penance. It's like, oh, you got a gift, now you got to give a gift. It's yeah. <laughs> Which after they told us about it, we started seeing like signs that said like white day and that morning we saw this big line of men outside of a chocolate shop and I was like, wow, that chocolate shop's really popping. Like, must be some good chocolate, you know? But now it makes sense. All of those men were lined up because they all had to buy a white day gift. <laughs> is beautiful totally recommend you come and we keep saying this but it's so true there are so many cherry blossom trees all around the castle so if they were in bloom bam it'd be beautiful but the castle's still gorgeous and the moat around it is huge it's really awesome to see all this ancient architecture one side of the castle is a plum grove i'm not really sure if that's what it's called but it is this beautiful garden of all plum trees and we were a little late for their full bloom and most of the trees were past um, but there were still a few that had the beautiful pink buds on them they don't smell as good as cherry blossoms but they are really pretty and they're a lot more pink and honestly it's been such a big blessing touring the city with some locals we definitely would not have as much out of this trip had it not been for dan and mayu <laughs> not only did they tell us about different cultural things but we also got to learn a lot more of the language with them too. Dan is learning the language and so he kind of takes every opportunity to like point out the different characters, the different language styles and writing styles and what their origins are. Um, and then Mayu like translates a bunch of stuff for us. And so we've learned a ton in the past few hours. It's getting to be evening time and we're pretty hungry. So really excited for dinner. Dan and Mayu are gonna bring us out to tonight to a restaurant that we get to have two of the most famous dishes here in Osaka. One of them being okonomiyaki which is this like fried pancake and the other one is yakisoba which is fried noodles. Hopefully we'll be able to film a little bit in the restaurant and be able to show you what these foods even look like and taste like.
rest of our adventures here in Japan and hopefully other places too, then just subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you come along with us. Bye. I wish to be, I wish to be me